Okay, so you know how I said that this lesson was going to be the one where we're going to add a sign in button? Well, it turns out I lied. Uh, this lesson is where we add in all the frameworks and all the linker flags and do all the random setup stuff we have to do before we add the sign in button. But I promise after this, we'll be adding a button. It'll be really exciting. So let's get into adding our frameworks. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is download the Play Games SDK and the Google Plus SDK. We're going to make use of both of these libraries in our application. So first thing we're going to do is go to developers.google.com slash games slash services. And once that page pops up, we're going to go to the downloads link here on the left. Now on this page, you'll see a link to the games SDK. By the time you see this tutorial, this will probably say version 1.1. You can click on this link and this will download a zip file to somewhere on your local drive. Once that's done, you're going to want to follow this Google Plus iOS SDK link and this will take you to the downloads page for the Google Plus platform. If we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a link for the Google Plus iOS SDK and we can download this zip file as well. Once that's done, you'll have a downloads folder that looks a little something like this. We've got our Google Plus SDK and our Play Game Services SDK. And so first thing you're going to want to do is unzip each of these. And then I suppose we can trash the zip files just to clean up a little space. Great. And now we have some frameworks we can add to our project. Now we're going to leave this Play Game Service alone for a little while, but let's explore what's in our Google Plus iOS SDK. You'll see in here we've got a couple of frameworks along with a bundle file and this open source directory along with the change log, readme file, and some sample code. For the purposes of our application, we're going to want to add the two frameworks into our Xcode project. So the easiest way to do that is let's go to Xcode and we can simply drag these two framework folders into our Xcode project. So I'm going to copy over the Google Open Source Framework folder. And depending on your setup, you may want to copy these into your destination folder, or you might want to leave this unchecked if, for instance, you have a centralized location where all of your libraries are going to be, then you can have multiple applications all referring to the same directory. And at some point in the future, when you need to update this directory, this framework, you'll only need to update it in one place. On the other hand, if you need to put everything into a nice standalone folder that you can zip up and send around, maybe it's worth copying this into your destination folder. In my case, I'm going to leave this check and copy everything over. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the Google Plus framework. And again, I'll leave this checked. Make sure that the guess by number target is checked as well. And look at that. We've got two new frameworks added to our project. I'm just going to move these into the frameworks folder. And we can take a minute to talk about uh, the few things that we're not adding. You'll notice we have a Google Plus dot bundle file that we're not going to copy over. This contains all the resources needed to generate an in-game Google Plus sign in button. And for reasons that I'll explain in a future lesson, we're actually not going to take advantage of this. We're going to generate our own. But if you were to use the official Google Plus sign in button, you would also want to copy over this bundle. In addition, there's an open source folder. This open source folder contains the source code versions of everything that is in your Google open source framework folder. The framework folder tends to be a little easier to add into your application. You just kind of drag it in and you're done. But I know that some developers like to have the open source folder with all the source code added to their project. They might want to do this so they can get in there and debug what's happening if they're you know, program is running into issues going off into the open source library. There have been a few bug workarounds in the past I've had to implement where we actually needed to alter or add things to the open source folder instead of the framework. So there may be times you want to do this. However, in our case, to keep things simple, we're just going to stick with the framework. But feel free if you'd like to add the open source directory instead. You definitely want to add one or the other. Don't add both, or my guess is you'll end up with a bunch of those duplicate symbol errors. So the next thing we're going to want to do to get this library to work is add this kind of obscure linker flag into our project. So I'm going to go to this target, and under Build Settings, I'm going to search for Linker, and here, Other Linker Flags. 
I'm going to double click this and add capital OBJ capital C as our linker flag. You need to do this to get the frameworks working. And if you're working, how would I ever figure out that this flag needs to be set for things to work? This is all available on our documentation. We walk you through all this step by step on the iOS quick start guide. So please be sure to check that out if you ever need a review of what's going on in this video. So we're going to add that. And then the final thing we need to do is add in our custom URL type. If you'll recall from our presentation, we need to register with the system that com.google.guessmynumber colon slash OAuth2 callback is a URI that corresponds to our application. And the way to do that is in Xcode in a feature that maybe you've never used before, which is adding custom URL types. So let's show you how to do that. Go back to Xcode and in the info tab, this URL types drop down will expand. We can hit the plus sign to create our own custom one. And this identifier will be your bundle identifier, which in my case is com.google.guessmynumber. But in your case, probably has your own company name instead of Google. And we'll add the same thing for our URL scheme. So we'll just copy and paste that. And we can leave it at that. That's good enough. At that point, we've now basically told the system, hey, if you see any URL that begins with com.google.guessmynumber instead of HTTP or mail to, that means go to our application. And finally, let's add a few other frameworks we're going to need. So go to your build phases tab and under link binary with libraries, hit the plus sign and we're going to add system configuration.framework. We can also add security.framework. And then let's add a few other frameworks that we don't need for sign in, but we're going to need for the games SDK in a couple of lessons. So I'm going to add core data.framework. I'm going to add core text.framework. And finally, let's add quartz core.framework. We can drag all these to our frameworks folder just to keep everything nice and neat. And there we go. The setup steps are finally done. And now, in the next lesson, for real, honest, I promise, maybe we can add a sign in button. Bye.